Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a combination of data visualization and chat GPT to develop your ideas in an interesting way. So that instead of having an interface like this, where you have to read through lengthy responses, you can do it more iteratively in short fragments. So you can really focus on developing your own thinking and not taking the ready-mades that are produced by GPT. So keep watching to learn how it works. We'll be using the app that's called Infranodus that I developed and uh, to do that you can go into the apps import page and choose uh, AI ideation, live AI ideation. And once you choose this, you start with the topic that you're, in, you're interested in. You can either write an abstract or uh, just like the key phrase that describes what you're interested in. For me it's heart rate variability uh, because I'm currently working on an app that would allow people to measure it in ways uh, that goes beyond what the fitness trackers can do. And I want to learn a little bit more about this subject, for instance, and not so much to learn about it because I already know what it's about, but to see what are the specific nuances that I should take into consideration when I'm developing this whole discourse, right? So for example, here I'm starting from the basics. Uh, I type in heart rate variability. It gives me an explanation of what that is. So. If I see something I like that I want to add into my stack of ideas, I'm going to save it to the graph. Here is just a definition of what heart rate variability is. It's a measure of variation in between every heartbeat, used as an indicator of physiological resilience and emotional stress. This is great because it reminds me directly, you know, how I could also market this app, that it can increase your resilience and adaptivity and reduce stress. Here I can generate more responses, um, but basically it's saying more or less the same thing, but maybe in different words. I'm going to save another one because I like the idea of physi physiological flexibility. That seems very interesting too. So I'm going to save that as well. And then what happens here is uh, when I want to develop it further, um, I have some thoughts in mind. So I can actually write my own ideas for how it can go further, or I can also choose some stuff on the graph, like for instance, emotional resilience, heartbeat, and let's see, maybe another word, variability. I can select the terms I like on the graph that I would like to be better connected. And then I go into the inside panel and just select this one again. So they're marked and then it can generate content related to these four ideas. So it's just going to come up with some thought that links this idea of emotional resilience and the uh, and heart rate variability, because that's the aspect that I'm really interested in, the connection of this body marker to uh, how we feel both on the level of emotions and also physiologically, right? So here it says emotional resilience can significantly influence heartbeat variability, indicating an individual's ability to adaptively respond in stressful situations. This is great. This could almost read like uh, an explanation of why this app or this approach would be interesting. So I can save it into the graph, generate more responses. Emotional resilience can be gushed through uh, heartbeat variability. A stable heart rate indicates better stress management and adaptability. Emotional, but so I want to show you something here because uh, this is not exactly true. Uh, I already know this, the, the subject, so it made a slight factual mistake. It's not exactly that the stable heart rate indicates better stress management. Uh, but that makes me think that uh, maybe I can go deeper into the subject and use the AI to generate some ideas in relation to that, right? So uh, I will make a manual query and I'm going to say, okay, uh, what's the connection between HRV and emotional and physiological resilience? Here I'm using ChatGPT. Uh, GPT-4 mode, so that usually generates better answers and factual responses. So here it says uh, how it's an indicator of physiological flexibility. A higher HRV signifies healthier emotional and physiological resilience as it reflects the body's ability to adapt efficiently to stresses. So this is great. Now I'm going to show you something else. I'm adding it into the graph and I want to dive a little bit deeper into the subject. So I'm going to click elaborate here and then by default it proposes me to make a, a sort of like an instruction or a prompt for ChatGPT or GPT-4 to develop this further, right? And the default one is elaborate on the statement. I could also write, uh, explain why this is the case scientifically. I'm improvising, let's see if it's gonna work out. 
if it's going to give an interesting answer or not. Sometimes it takes time to think. So here it says that uh, HRV is grounded scientifically in a nervous system's operations, specifically the connections between sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. So this is great because uh, now we're getting deeper into the science of things. And look what happens when I add this into the graph. It will add a completely new cluster. So here it's shown here with, with the light green color, right? Which shows me that my discourse is developing uh, in a new direction. So I was in this region first like on this pink and on this uh, kind of dark green uh, cluster and now I'm getting into this parasympathetic sympathetic one, right? So there I can actually select those and maybe also HRV and then again use this function to generate some content in relation to parasympathetic and sympathetic so I can develop this cluster a little bit further. And this is basically how you would use the graph live. And this is a big difference from how you would be having a conversation if you did that using uh, GPT, you know, like you would basically, like, I think I have here a conversation on, on HRV. So I have to read through all of this. I have to find the stuff that I want to develop further by reading text here directly, visually, I can see where I should make connections. I'm seeing this new cluster. I know that I want to connect it to the main idea, so I just select some nodes and ask it to do that for me, right? And again, this is not to make AI think for you. This is just a stimulator to come up with some fragments of ideas, which I can then later rephrase myself, make new connections between them, and then generate some original content based on what I'm thinking about. Uh, so here it says, uh, it's kind of like a general statement, interact to influence Okay, that's great. So here it's explaining me the biological uh, sort of reason why it works like that. And uh, I can again elaborate uh, how it works uh, biologically. So you see here I'm giving it a prompt of what it should do with the statement that it itself generated. So this is great because it's a real human in the loop interaction with uh, AI where I'm making it produce ideas, but I'm not making it write a whole text for me. I'm always in control of every paragraph of every statement it makes, and I'm only choosing the stuff I like, and I'm using it to inspire myself to see in which direction it could be interesting to develop this discourse further, right? So here it's explaining exactly what happens, that the parasympathetic system slows the heart rate, promoting rest and digest functions, and the sympathetic system accelerates it for flight of, or fight responses. This balance create HRV, an indicator of physical and mental resilience. This is great. I could even use this sentence in my own text or in my promotion materials uh, and so on, right? So then I can generate some more stuff. Uh, here is just kind of like a rephrase of that, but I'm going to keep that also because that's interesting. And finally, uh, I can also generate actually more responses and see if it comes up with something completely different on another iteration. Sometimes you might run it a few times to see if there's an interesting thing to do here. Okay, so then one other thing that I like to do is to be like, okay, I look at the graph again. Let's, let's take a zoom out view. And this, I always encourage people to do it in front notes because this is what the graph is really good for. Now you see things on a really detailed granular level. You see the main ideas like variability, heartbeat, parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous systems and so on. But this is a very granular level. So sometimes it's nice to zoom out and to see uh, what are the main ideas you're working on. So here I click on high level ideas. You also have the button here in the analytics panel. The analytics panel is available here, right? And then it shows me what this conversation is about. All right, so I see that it's about heart rate variability, stress adaptation, resilience, uh, autonomous nervous system. So this is great because it gives me a very clear idea of where the conversation is going and also uh, makes me think of whether I'm missing anything. I see I'm talking about the actual thing I'm interested in and also stress and resilience. It makes me think that I want to go more into technical details. Uh, and this is great because this is exactly what uh, this graph allows me to do, to always have this sort of feedback reflection on my thinking process. And if I use it right, if I ask myself, what am I missing? Uh, not, not only what's there, but what am I missing? Then I'm going to develop ideas in a very interesting way. So here I'm going to say, okay, uh, maybe let's focus on the technical 
aspect. And I will write a question. How is uh, heart rate variability normally calculated? By the way, you can also take the current context into account, but I prefer not to do that because I like to keep the answers more open because then I can cover more territory at the beginning. And only later I start connecting them together and kind of trying to make it more coherent. And this is also why the graph is really good because it shows you which, which part of the process you're in somehow. You know, now we're just throwing some ideas on the mental map, um, trying to expand as much as possible. At some point we will need to start also connecting the ideas better because we want the discourse to be coherent and not all over the place but to be focused on one thing so this is what we will do later. Uh, so here it says uh, that HRV is, is typically calculated using time domain methods measuring intervals between successive heartbeats or frequency domain methods considering distribution uh, in various frequency bands. So this is good. I'm getting to te technical details. I'm going to save this research further on those. Uh, here it's explaining me a little bit more what those time domain methods are. I'm going to save that as well. For example, standard deviation of interbit intervals. And I know that, for example, Apple Watch uses this approach. But I'm going to ask it to elaborate and uh, please explain if any other methods can be used in addition to the ones listed below. Okay, so I'm going to give it its own response and then ask it to say to me if we can develop it uh, further and find some other methods that are used in science to uh, analyze HRV. And here we get to the more interesting stuff, like for instance, nonlinear analysis, like the trended fluctuation analysis or point curve plots that can be used for assessment. So I'm going, going to save this. I'm going to also edit it a little bit, so I will remove on care plots uh, and let's see how we can elaborate on this. Why would DFA be interesting in this context, right? So again, I'm using a prompt to uh, specify how we can develop an idea that was given out by uh, Chad Jeptin in an interesting way. So here it's explaining how DFA, this uh, nonlinear analysis techniques, adds a new dimension. Okay, so this is, it just says uh, it's unveiling potentially enlightening insights, so a little bit too general. Uh, Nonlinear lens, unveiling concealed aspects in time domain and frequency domain methods. And the third answer, intricate complexity. So let's say like uh, which aspects are unveiled specifically. And Let's go into more precision here. And by the way, you will also see that uh, the deeper we go, the more topics, the more specific topics appears here. So here we see that um, it's adding hidden elements. So, so it's revealing some hidden elements. So let's say we, we save this and we decide to ask how does DFA detrended fluctuation analysis work and why it can be interesting for measuring HRV. Okay, save this into the graph and I'm doing it all in real time so bear with me if it takes a little moment but I'm doing that so you can also use the same workflow in your own explorations. And here we say that it's a statistical approach for detecting long-range long correlations in time series data. So there I get more specific. And, uh, and let's see if there's something else. And again, something else. So maybe I like this first one, long range correlations in censored in, in time series data. So I just choose that part and ask it to elaborate it further. So as you can see, it's generating some ideas, fragments of those ideas. I'm taking them in, saving what I like, and asking it to develop it further. And uh, here uh, you see it says that it can unveil statistical nature of seemingly random trends. Um, is an innovative technique that unveils the presence of long range correlations, mathematical intricacy, okay. And then another one unveils hidden long range co correlations and recurrent trends. So this is interesting. 
this is what it's doing actually. It's it's unveiling some hidden trends and uh, long range correlation. So I can save this. As you can see, I'm developing this uh, part on the hidden correlations. And this is the part that is maybe also something very special for my uh, content or for the project that I'm working on because I really want to focus on um, sort of providing more data than other tools or, or approaches do. So this is great because it helps me find where I could uh, specialize somehow, right? So here I see these hidden correlations and maybe I can even remove HRV and then uh, hide it from the graph, slice it off and then I can also hide time because we talked about it a lot, heart rate variability and what it enables me to do is to find what are the topics that I could develop further. So this I really recommend you to do during the interaction that you have with this tool that once you get or, or you cover the main topics which might even seem generic because you already know what they're about, you remove them all from the graph to see what are the topics that you should go into further. So for example one here I see is, is this one, is very interesting, is, uh, is the connection of HRV to resilience and psychological and emotional well-being. This is great. And then this technical aspect of um, sympathetic nervous system uh, a response balance. So maybe we can even sort of focus on this too. And to do that, you go into blind spots and you can highlight the gaps between different ideas in the network. So the clusters which could be better connected but are not and then ask uh, Infranodus to generate some idea for you that would connect them both. So for example, here we're lacking some connection between autonomous nervous system and heart rate variability. And this is because we removed all these terms. But this is great because we will force it now to generate some idea that would connect those two clusters together. I could also do it myself. So I could look at those two topics and think of a connection myself. I can also use the AI and generate some interesting question that can stimulate me to think further in this direction, right? So here it's asking what are the physiological responses of the sympathetic nervous system that influence emotional resilience and heartbeat interval as indicators of typically fight or flight function and their impact on overall body health. So this is really good because it's allowing me to go much deeper into the specific aspect of how our nervous system works and why HRV is an important metric. So I'm going to uh, save this into my notes. This is another function you have here that you can save it into notes if it's some idea that you want to develop further. Um, I don't want it to be part of this main discourse because this is just a kind of like a notepad of ideas but when I get to something that I know I need to research further then I'm going to save it into notes and go on uh, with that. And then if I'm done with this gap, by the way I can also turn on their names and then find another gap, some stuff that are missing. So for example, stress adaptation and data analytics. So this is great. Seemingly unrelated topics, but exactly because they are unrelated, we will generate some idea that would connect them in an interesting way and link them together. So let's see if there is some interesting question that comes up. What is the correlation between traditional approaches to creating healthy balance of stress and dynamic patterns signifying efficient and good long-term outcomes in statistical series? So this is a bit too much like uh, just using the keywords to generate something, but I always use it as inspiration to make me think how I could fix this question to make it interesting because actually uh, the worse is the phrasing, the more interesting is going to be the outcome because it's not so good, the phrasing, because those topics are not related, but this is usually where the good ideas are, right? So it's kind of like a balance you have to strike between connecting things that are hard to connect and also making them coherent. So in this case, I'm going to see what are the correlations between dynamic pattern of stress, healthy, good lifestyle in the long run. So this can be interesting to explore further. I can save it to notes or I can ask the system to elaborate on this topic and generate some interesting content in relation to this question that it asked itself to come up with some interesting idea. So here it's talking about uh, fluctuations and how more variability means that you can handle stress better. So this I'm going to save in the graph because it's quite interesting and also into my notes as well because I find it useful for further discourse. So in the end, once I go through a few iterations, I can get the nodes back 
into the graph that I removed, and then I see uh, the full representation of all my ideas. And if I am to come back to this graph any time later for further developing it into some text or maybe some ideas or marketing material, I can always look at the graph, see what it's about, see what the main topics are, and then usually I like to focus on some idea at the periphery, uh, maybe here, individual ability. I will select those nodes to see in which context they were used. So it shows me here exactly the sentence that uses individual ability to adaptively respond. And then I'm going to develop this discourse further by either thinking how it can go on in this direction or by choosing uh, to use GPT-4 to generate some ideas um, in relation to these topics. And by the way, I could also do a very simple thing by taking the current context into account. So once I select those and take the current context into account, it's going to generate something that will also relate to heart rate variability. So the original topic that I've been talking about, you see? And then when I add this, you will see that it links everything on the periphery to the center, which usually makes the text more coherent. So these are some different approaches that you can use to uh, generate ideas. You see, we built like a very sort of comprehensive and coherent at the same time mind map of ideas. Uh, by the way, this measure of topical diversity shows uh, how, how diverse it is or how focused it is. At the moment, it's medium. You have an explanation of what that means when you click here. But basically, you want to aim for the yellow or the green because uh, if it's in the red, it means it's too biased. If it's in the blue, it means it's too dispersed. So you want to be somewhere focused, uh, but also to have enough diversity in your ideas uh, if you're writing, let's say, an informative text, right? So this is how you would approach this. Uh, Try it out on infranodus.com and let me know how it works. Also subscribe to this channel so you can get in informed about new videos when they come out. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know and thank you.